When you're up against the wall and your mountain seems so tall and you realize life's not always fair, you can run away and hide, let the old man decide. You can change your circumstances with a prayer. When everything falls apart, praise his name. When you have a broken heart, raise your hands and say, Lord, you're all I need. You're everything to me, and he'll take the pain away. When it seems you're all alone, praise his name. When you feel you can't go on, just raise your hands and say, Greater is he that is within me you can praise the hurt away if you'll just praise his Thank y'all. And I lost my earbud.
If you'll turn that CD down just a little bit, please. If Jesus comes tomorrow to spend some time with you, would you answer all his questions or lie to hide the truth? Would you welcome him with open arms or even let him in if jesus comes tomorrow what then if jesus calls your number could you leave today are you ready to lay down your worldly goods and walk away would it take a month of Sundays just to tell him of your sin if Jesus comes tomorrow what then If the sky turns black as midnight in the middle of the day and somehow you knew that Jesus would soon be on his way Would you have to beg forgiveness or could you reach out and take his hand if Jesus comes tomorrow what then if the sky turns black midnight in the middle of the day and somehow you knew that Jesus would soon be on his way would you have to beg forgiveness or could you reach out and take his hand if jesus comes tomorrow what then if jesus comes tomorrow what then thank y'all Man, thank you, Miss Cindy. All right. I'm fixing to sing. Y'all get ready. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, hey, would you give that to Miss Allison? I, I found one up here. Y'all, some of y'all was getting ready to get out of here, wasn't you? <laughs> that was perfect. Boy, what would y'all have done if I'd have busted off in some real great voice? <laughs> he probably said, okay, that's Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Lip syncing. <laughs> That, that's what it would be. <laughs> Ain't that who got busted lip syncing? See, I could have had a singing career <laughs> for a short time till I got caught. Amen. <laughs> good looking bunch tonight. Had a meeting, so I wasn't out there, but I did eat some of the good food. We're thankful for the hospitality team. Amen. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the music, Miss Cindy. Sounded awesome. 
We're going to go down our prayer list here, prayer request. Uh, we'll get started. All right. Melissa, help me out with that last name. All right. Good job. Lord knows Clint uh, Griswold. Is that right? Larry and Brooke Peterman. Tommy Boykin. Terry Klupp. Edith and Greg Harbolt, Joyce Williams, Alice Boykin, Jesse and Jamie Ship, Dwayne and Bev Buras, B U R A S, Unspoken, Toby Ratcliffe. We'll open it up. <coughs> Miss Allison, Gloria Westcott, continued recovery. She broke her hip a few weeks ago, so she's still in Coontz, I think, in rehab, so <coughs> continue to lift her up. Ann Smith, I just got a text from Mike. He couldn't be here tonight. And it says, hey, brother, just letting you know, Mom is in the hospital in Jasper. Her electrolytes and all is off, and she fell this morning, so please put her on the prayer list. So we want to lift up Miss Ann, and we'll be checking on her. So just letting everybody know about Miss Ann. And <laughs> Dallas Roy. Okay, surgery Friday for little Dallas that's over here. Ashley for her pregnancy. <coughs> Casey. All right. Scott. All right. Miss Pat Bagwell. His mom, pray for Scott's mom. Pat. Ashley. Okay, Ben, yes, yes, ma'am, that family, where do, they, where do they live, Louisiana? All right, lift them up for God's peace. Yes, ma'am. Praise report. Sisters home. I have a prayer request too. One my best friend, Mr. Nelson Reedy, he's seventy three. Uh he <coughs> needs a got some heart issues and he's goes to Houston on Friday morning and this is another prayer request. He asked me to take him to downtown Houston to the Methodist Hospital. <coughs> so that brother's got some faith to ask me to take him to downtown Houston. <laughs> Pray for both of us. Amen. I may have to rededicate when I get in here Sunday morning. Amen. But anyway, pray for Nelson. They're going to do some procedure on his heart. Nelson Reedy, Miss Renee. All right. Carol. All right. All right. Donna Brown McDonald. All right, Miss Donna. Yes, ma'am. Miss Eddie May. Miss Ruth. <coughs> Amen. Shelley. Ruth Shelley. Clayton. Stevie Miller. Okay, Steve. All right, Johnson or Joan? All right. Who else we got? <coughs> Mr. Marv? Charlotte Woolham. James? Sheila, back problems. I pray for Miss Sheila, back. That ain't no good. Yes, sir. Okay. Barry Powell. All right. Melissa's brother in law. <coughs> okay. We'll do that. Anybody else? Don't want to miss nobody? <coughs> yes, sir. Yeah, 
Jeff Byrne. <clears throat> Byrne's over 90% of his body. Tell me his name again. Robbie Bertrand. All right. Lift him up. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Greg Alvarado. All right. DC. Kurt. Yeah, you said Kurt wasn't feeling real well. Yeah. All right. Yeah, armed services that are deployed. Amen. Kurt Hersery and armed forces. Anybody else? All right. <coughs> Truckers. Yeah. <coughs> Truckers. Amen. Lift them up. Hey, our truckers do a lot for us. They really do. All right. Uh, anybody else? We'll, we'll go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Thank God he cares for our needs. What a good-looking crowd tonight. <coughs> Amen. Lord, thank you for every need on this list. Lord, you, you knew it before we did, but, Lord, you still tell us to bring our needs before you in our petitions. Lord, those that need <coughs> strength and healing in their bodies and those that are having surgeries, we just pray that you'd guide those doctors' hands as they do what they do. You give them the gift. To do what they do and bless the nurses and those taking care of them. Lord, those that are in the process of healing, we just pray that you continue to touch them with your healing power and restoration. Lord, those that need strength and peace and comfort, that have lost loved ones, we just pray your peace and comfort over them. And we just thank you, Lord, for meeting every need. We call each person by name tonight. Lord, you know each one of them. But Lord, we lift them up to you, and we ask you, may they feel the power of prayer as we lift them up, and may you meet every need they have. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. <coughs> Amen. All right, I'll run over some quick announcements here right quick. Uh, if you are a visitor tonight, welcome to Jasper County Cowboy Church. We're glad to have you. And uh, if you don't have a church home, we say welcome home. We don't pass the hat at Cowboy Church. There's a wooden church at the back of each auditorium on each side. One in the four years you leave, if you give it your tithes and offerings, uh, drop it in there. And thank you for your faithful giving on behalf of the church. We, we couldn't do all the crazy things we do. How many of you probably had never been to a busier church than JC3? <laughs> Amen. It, we're busy. We, get, we, get it, we, got it, we, we are always hopping, doing something for Christ, and finding and thinking of ways to present the gospel to people and, and share his love. It's the greatest news ever. And we are, de I slapped that so hard, my, my, uh, I better calm down, knock my, my, knock my clock over. Y'all realize it's only 619 in Idaho, right? So I got a little time. <laughs> but we're always doing something, and we're, we're active. And, you know, I was listening to a guy today, Rick Warren. He wrote the book Purpose Driven Life, and uh, he was preaching on purpose today. And it really, me and Miss Allison were listening to it while we were driving to the church, and it inspires me to, to be a part of something bigger than we are. And the kingdom of God is vastly bigger than we are. Amen? So we get to be a part. If we're cutting up potatoes in the hospitality team, or if we're preaching to a thousand people and anything in between, we all work for the same boss. Amen? And we, get, we, we don't have to serve God. We get to. And our... our attitude here is contagious amen you brought a guy in that's kind of excited about serving jesus to be your pastor right <laughs> so hey i'm i'm pumped i mean i'm always looking for the pony in the room and i realize who we work for it's so exciting to get to do anything for christ uh, through our local church in your personal lives but we are we must be as christians driven by purpose because the picture is so much bigger than us if I just, you know, spend my whole life doing something for me, it's just going to be temporary. It's going to go, amen? But when we work for the Lord and serve Him in the ways that we do, it's an eternal reward. We're going to spend eternity in heaven one day, amen? So thank you for your giving. Stop by the sale barn. We got some cool praying cowboy caps and shirts and appreciate everything the sale barn does for the hospitality ministry as well. Men's prayer breakfast every Monday at 6 o'clock. How'd that go Monday, Mr. Marvin? You have two or three people? 
Oh, man, that's good. 13 people. Oh, Scott. He's, he, they got him doing all kinds. He's counting tonight. I always pick on him about it. But men's prayer breakfast every Monday morning at 6 o'clock. Take advantage of the nursery. You see the sign. You can go through the door there. Go down the hall, first door on the left. If you have a child in the nursery, they'll give you a, a, a little printout with a number. You can watch the display and make sure your child has a problem. You can run back there and check on them in the nursery. Round pen, men's and women's Bible study are Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. in the back offices. Uh, morning devotions, don't forget uh, Jasper County Cowboy Church on your Facebook page. You can watch uh, live devotions. I love those devotions. I was doing them anyway, but they're so, man, I, I get a lot out of those devotions. So 6.40 on every morning, Monday through Friday. Um, Let's see, don't forget to look up, if you're on YouTube, you can go to Jasper County Cowboy Church. We have a channel on there as well. And let's see, church directory, Miss Meredith is doing well. Make sure, follow up with her Sunday about getting pictures and everything. And don't forget, one of our fellow churches, Orange County Cowboy Church, uh, they're seeking a, a senior pastor. So if we know of anybody, spread the word. You have not because you ask not. So that's why I put it out there so you can pray. Uh, Mr. Uh, the pastor there is a great man, and uh, we, Mr. Dale, we we talked quite a bit, and I told him there's a burden on my heart, so I want to put it before our church to pray that God would send the person that needs to be there. Amen. One other thing we are looking for here pretty soon. I visited with Mr. Cody tonight, and we got all of our teams, and man, we're rocking and rolling. Isn't that cool? We presented the care team Sunday. And we already got a leader over it, and all the lay pastors are, are working with that care team, making sure that we take care of people. If somebody's having surgery or something, we want them to know we're praying for them. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> following up with them. And we all try to do a good job of that. I, tell you, I, I actually follow up with lots of people nowadays with the live deal. I talked to a lady from, that used to attend my church at Nacogdoches many years ago. Uh, she called us this morning, Miss Allison. said, who was that again? <laughs> There's so, our tent stakes have broadened so much that they had lost a family member. She lives in Kilgore, Texas, and says, you know, calling you, Pastor Chet, let you know we lost a loved one, and so we pray with her, you know, get the, so we're all, our, our tent stakes have definitely broadened with, you know, our online outreach nowadays, and it gives us an opportunity to be there for people, so I'm thankful for our Care team, but another area we're really wanting to step it up is in our youth, the teenagers. And we're needing a few leaders in there. Uh, everybody say this with me. I do not have to preach. There's the man. Stand up, Cody, and do a backflip. No, no. Stand up for us. That's Cody. He's one of our elders, but he also is over the youth group. He does the preaching upstairs for the teenagers. And you'll find out how good a preacher you are when you preach to teenagers. <laughs> Amen. He's a good one. He, he holds their attention, but he needs just some leaders around him. He will handle the preaching, just people to help orchestrate. He said, organize, you know, have everything ready. You can sit on the back row upstairs. You don't have to do anything when it comes to the service. If you want to, that's fine. But he just needs some organization just to plan some things. Like for the teenagers, you know, every now and then it's a big deal to maybe have a have a cook a cookout here at the church, and he'll be here. He'll 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 do Bible studies, preaching, whatever you need. He just needs some some people to help him organize and get some you know planning for him because he works full time job. He's an elder, so uh, if God puts it on your heart or when, uh, let us know. Let Cody know. Let me know. Let Miss Allison know. We'll we'll get to him, and uh, that's the last team that we're going to really vamp up. And uh, boy. We're going to be hitting on all eight, we have 10 cylinders. We, we, we're, we're driving a V10 around here. We're wide open. So we're going to get that one tuned up and, and rolling too and reach a lot of young people with the gospel and some cool things. So we're excited about it. Pray about that. God will raise up the right people. Sunday, February 27th, Handicapable Rodeo Meeting. If you want to help, please sure be sure and be there. March 20th, we'll do a training, a church-wide child protective training class following the service that morning. It's required for those helping with the handicapped or rodeo if you're 18 and over working with children. Miss Debbie is looking for the following items for the handicapped or rodeo. 12 old cowboy hats, old hat bands, and a bubble machine. <laughs> so that's, that's some unique requests for the handicapped or rodeo. 
We're excited. That will be April the 8th. Bring your own Kleenex, and you will be able to minister to lots of people and make some dreams come true uh, with a mechanical bull. Uh, we'll do horse riding and all kinds of little booze. So <clears throat> be praying about April the 8th. It's going to be a great day. I think that's all of our announcements. We're ready to get rolling. Everybody blessed tonight? It's a blessing to be able to be in God's house. I love Wednesday nights. I love Sundays, but I sure like Wednesday nights. We're kind of laid back. I got my old work shirt on. Hope that's okay. I had another shirt, and I said, Miss Bobby, is this shirt all right? She said, yeah, it looks a little worn, but that's good. I said, that's who you are. I said, I'm good then. But I did have a backup JC3 uh, T-shirt on. I noticed it's raining out there a little bit. But remember last, uh, on Sunday, I said that I bought a cow in Kirbyville for Allison, and the cow was mean, and she said, I got the cow. Well, I picked her up another cow, and we unloaded this cow at church today because I was going to pick up the cow that I left here and thank Wes for feeding her. And uh, so I, I got this other cow, and it's a pair, a little, a little calf, and and, and I unloaded it. I said, man, I'd probably make some money on this cow. And I said, what we're going to do, though, is we got to run them in this. I need to get the tags off of them. So I said, just unload them here in these pins, run them in the stripping chute, and I'll pull all them tags off of them. And so we run this old cow in there, and Allison already named her, so y'all pray for me. When a woman names a cow or something, it's, it's, hard, that it, it's hard for it to go. <laughs> For a week, she'll be around. She named her Valentine. Because <laughs> I bought her a crazy one for Valentine's Day last Saturday, all right? <laughs> so, so we run this cow in there, and I said, you know, kind of watch her. Let me hop up there, and I pull them tags off. And uh, next thing I know, she's just letting me do whatever. Next thing you know, Allison was scratching her right behind the ear. I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> So, anybody wants to buy a cow, come see me after church. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a cow you can pet. And I might need, if you got a little room on your house, if I sell her, you know. <laughs> Give me a couple of nights to stay over and let everything settle down. But anyway, I thought that was funny how she said, Oh, I like this one. said, I think this one's mine now. You can have that one back there as the other one. And I was trying to get the stickers off that other cow, and she was kicking and bellering and hollering, you know, and she said, ah, this is my cow up here. <laughs> the joys of marriage, amen. <laughs> amen. All right. If you have your Bibles, we'll go from last week. I didn't give these to Miss Ashley, but uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, and then we'll go to 1 Kings 17, and she's quick on it. If not, uh, if you don't have a Bible, we should have one ready. Proverbs chapter 3 Verse 5 and verse 6. I'll pull that up right quick. Proverbs 3. Should I give you these, Ashley? I should have done that. First <coughs> Kings 17, 8 through 16. We'll get to those later. But Proverbs chapter 3. Who has it in your Bible already? Read it out loud. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Proverbs 3, verse 3. <clears throat> now, I'm going to read verse 5 and verse 6. We've all heard this. We could quote it probably. It says, trust in the Lord. <clears throat> verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. Can I get a good Amen. And he will show you which path to take. We, we, we read this last Wednesday, so we're not going to spend a, a bunch of time on it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. That right there could take us years to accomplish. Not depend on our own understanding. Then he says, seek his will in all you do. And he will show you <coughs> which path to take. And today, it really encouraged me listening to uh, that message we were driving about purpose and we as christians have we're, we're driven or should be driven by purpose whatever it is we do for god it, it's it's important 
It doesn't matter what it is. Y'all know my buddy that <clears throat> goes to a cowboy church in Dayton, Texas, and he has a, a volunteer ministry where he cleans the church and the restrooms, and he calls it Janitors for Jesus. Amen? <clears throat> He's excited about it. We all do something for God, <clears throat> and whatever we're doing for Him, no matter how big or small, it is important. <clears throat> Can I get a good amen? But he tells us to, to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Don't depend on our own understanding. Seek his will in all we do, and he'll show you which path to take. And if we're not careful, we just live our lives to exist. <clears throat> there's people, you know, uh, may, may, there, there's people that, that take it real serious about bodybuilding. Years ago, I used to do some bodybuilding only for the sake of doing ministry. Thank God I don't do that anymore. But it was fun. It had its place. And, but I knew people through the years that lived only to be a bodybuilder. And I got news for you. You're going to get older, and you're not going to look like you did at 30 years old. How many of you already figured that out? <laughs> Amen. Things start changing. Gravity sets in. Your chest in your 20s and 30s is up here, and for the guys, sometimes it settles in here. It's still our chest. It just came, you know, dropped a little bit. That's not anybody in here, though. Praise the Lord. We all got six-packs right here. Amen. Amen, yeah. They're by faith, and they're covered, and they're wrapped in insulation. We care about our six-packs, right? We want them, you know, we don't want them to get hurt, so we got them wrapped with insulation. But if you just put your faith in, you know, keeping your body in shape, and I believe we should take care of ourselves and try to eat healthy and all those things, but if I just put my whole life's purpose in my body or build, body building, I'm just using it as an example, it's sooner or later that's going to pass. If we just put our whole life into, you know, building a nest at home, nothing wrong with having a home. How many of you are thankful for your home? And, and ladies love to nest, and all that's important, but we also know that too is temporary. One day we will depart this life. Uh, we, we, can, we can focus on, you know, wealth. There's nothing wrong. God wants his people blessed. There's no problems with that. My point is, God has to be first. And God, I know people that are businessmen, man, they could pick up a cow patty and somebody would call them and try to buy it. And that's good. But those men, they love God, they put Him first, and they further the kingdom of God in the way that God has blessed and gifted them. But it takes all of us. But our focus as Christians is on God. And, and He should be, it's, we should live, literally, a purpose-driven life. And so, Proverbs chapter 3 says, don't try to figure everything out. Um, remember last week, I always like to tell a Bible school story on Wednesday night about once a month. Because I, see, I learned so many things in Bible school. We were very poor. Uh, drove hoopties. Everybody say hoopty. How many of you know what a hoopty is? How many of you don't know what a hoopty is? <laughs> if you don't know what a hoopty is, it's an old car that's held together with duct tape, baling wire, zip ties. That's what I'm talking about. You know you're a redneck when you say zip ties. <laughs> <laughs> what's that chicken tongues there you go and you know when i was in bible school I, all we could afford was a hoopty and but yet some of the greatest experiences in life i got was learning everybody say learning learning to trust god in so many different ways i learned so much in bible school but a lot of the greatest lessons i learned we're not necessarily in class. It was trying to live and survive and trust God. I learned so many things. I've drove more hoopties. Y'all remember me coming down the Indian Nation Turnpike one time? Cody was little in a car seat in my old car. It, it, was, it looked like I was up to no good. It was a Caprice Classic, and I bought it cheap, kind of like the $10 couch in North Tulsa. But whoever owned it before me, I don't know what they did for a living. I just know the tent was limo tent. 
So I didn't have any money to change the limo tent, so I drove around in a Caprice Classic with limo tent and drove it to bull ridings. And think, man, we don't know who's getting out here. Y'all be back up, give him some room. We don't know what's coming out. We can't see in there. <clears throat> one time we were coming down the Indian Nation Turnpike, coming from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we hit one of them rumble strips where the pay tolls are, and my hubcap came off my hoopty. And it hit the ditch, I've told it before, but it hit the ditch, and it was going faster than we were. <laughs> it passed us, and Cody was little. He was in his car seat, and he said, Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> and so the hubcap passes us up. If you've been up the Indian Nation Turnpike, there's net wire fence, I guess, to keep hogs and stuff out and getting run over in the road. But there's net wire fence all the way up that thing, and that hubcap ran and crashed into that net wire fence. Me, being the broke son of a gun I was, I pulled over and got my hubcap. <laughs> Banged it back on and we came on to Texas. <clears throat> but I learned so much through having to trust God for my next meal. Now, I don't thank God that he takes us through different phases in our life. And you may be there right now and you say, hey, I'm, I'm still doing that. <laughs> thank God. But those experiences, I wouldn't take a million dollars in a gold sack because I learned that God is faithful. <laughs> I got rid of that hoopty and got another hoopty <laughs> and kept going and just continued. But I learned a lot of things. Long story short, we got so many new people here. I have to tell some of these stories just so it all makes sense. When I went to graduate Bible school, my brother, who's 16 or 17 years older than I am, drove to Tulsa, Oklahoma. They didn't understand. They weren't Christians then. They thought I was crazy. I came in and told them I give my life to Christ. I'm leaving, quitting my job at the prison, and I'm going to go to Bible school. He said, man, you... They was trying to be nice. But remember my sister called me aside and said, I believe in you, boy. I know what you're doing. I know why you're doing it. And they supported me, and they helped me, <coughs> helped me get through Bible school. But... <coughs> During this time, my brother, you know, I didn't talk. I seen him a lot when I'd come home for the holidays, but that was about it. He comes to Tulsa, Oklahoma, sees where we live in that old trailer, and we had been in a travel trailer. We moved up and rented a trailer that was $220 a month. You know it was fancy. <laughs> Some of the windows was gone. <laughs> we took a piece of paneling and duct taped it in and did all this, put, put the plastic over the windows, put the felt tar paper around it and skirted it. And my brother came up, long story short, because most of y'all have heard this, but he came up and he seen where we were living. Kept us cool. We were a close family. Went to the hotel, and my sister-in-law sister told me, she said he sat down and cried like a baby. Because <laughs> he wanted more for his little brother. He, he, he thought we were struggling. And yeah, we were, but we were very, very happy. We learned God was just taking us through a season and teaching us to trust him, and, you know, it's a process. And so I learned not to try to figure everything out and that God is smarter than we are. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5. But remember, Elijah, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 through verse 16. 1 Kings 17 verse 8 through 16, and my, my point tonight is we just have to be obedient to what God speaks to us. We can't figure all this stuff out. God will meet you where you are. Amen? I hate to pick this thing up, but I bought this anvil. I'm going to keep it on this stage. As long as I'm here, so that's going to be a long time. Amen. <laughs> T, throw dirt in my face. But this old anvil, I bought it in 2000, 2011 or 2010. And there is no telling how many horses I've shod. Shoes have been shaped on this thing. And to you, it's just an old anvil that you like. I wish you'd give me that. I'd put it in the garage sale. Ain't no telling what it'd bring. They are hard to find. So if this thing comes up missing, I'm going to know who you are because you're going to be blowing when you get it to your truck. 
I'm going to find you. The guy that couldn't breathe when he left church, that's who got my and. But this thing means a lot to me. It's just a piece of iron to many of you. But there's lots of stories on this end. I've been a Minya horseshoe 10 years. Man, I worked my butt off. At one time, I took care of 600 horses on a six-week rotation. And I had people one time tell me that I wouldn't be able to make enough to rub two nickels together chewing horses. But God will meet you where you're at. He looks at your heart. He looks at your heart. Now, notice that God didn't just throw money my way. I had to work for it. That's that's like a curse word nowadays. W-O-R-K, the four-letter word. (laughs) If somebody is trying to rob you, just hand them a job application and they'll run away. The chances are. <clears throat> they think about breaking up some of them rights by just shooting in job applications. <laughs> They're gone. <clears throat> There's still nothing that takes a place of hard work. I mean, <laughs> there's something about a guy that'll go out and work a hard day's work. Man, it's just good for you. It's good for your mind. Uh, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And so when we're busy and we are willing to work, and there's many ways to work. I'm dumb. I, I work with my hands. It is hard. But many people work with their mind. It, it doesn't matter. It, when we find things to do, even if you're retired, it's still good to get out and do something outside. Amen. And, and, and do things because it's good for us. It gives us purpose. And we work for the creator of the universe. But this anvil is just a piece of metal. But to me, it has a lot of experiences. I've hit my fingers on this anvil. I've bled on this anvil. I had a horse one time sit back and knock this anvil over and almost hit me. There's all kinds of stories that go with our lives. But when I was in Bible school, I learned so many things that God will meet you where you're at. And when I went to shoeing horses full time again, I was, I was scared. In Texas, we say scared right i was nervous starting a new you know i'd taken a break from shoeing for several years and uh but i knew from my experiences before god had built a foundation in me that he would take care of me now there's times that we try things and maybe it don't work that doesn't mean god failed you you may just have to try something anybody ever tried anything and failed raise your hand praise the lord we've all in the same boat But if you keep trying, nobody's ever hit a home run without swinging the bat. You've got to keep trying. Just keep on pushing, Allison. Oh, man. It's getting romantic in here, boys. (laughs) We're going to wrap it up, guys. (laughs) You you and I met because of that. That's right. That's right. I'm thankful. God is way smarter than we are. But you got to give him something to work with. Amen? <clears throat> what was that deal that talked about somebody leaning on the shovel, but you got to use it an- as on Facebook? Do you remember that about work? She lives on Facebook, and now she can't remember it. <clears throat> yeah, somebody le- it, it was actually a, uh, had a lot of meaning to it about a shovel. You ask God to move a mountain, you better wake up with a shovel in your hand. <clears throat> in other words, we don't sit back on, in our mattress and say, God, you know, move this mountain. He wants us to put our hand to the plow. Give him something to work with. You know, when Jesus turned the water into wine, he could have just snapped his finger and turned it into wine. He made those men carry those pots, heavy pots, fill them with water, and carry them back, and then he turned it into wine. So we have to do our part. <clears throat> Can I get a good amen? That's why, I mean, it's sad to say, and when I first came here, I did a lot of preaching on what churches, man, we got some goofy thinking. Not us. Right? <clears throat> Think about it. 
tell me how smart this is. How many of you that we live close to the lake here like to fish? How many of you enjoy fishing? You say, I do. But how many of you would call me crazy if I said, y'all pray for me tomorrow? Okay, what is it? I'm going fishing tomorrow. You say, where are you fishing at, Pastor? And I say, my living room. I got some, I got some new uh, jigs, and I'm going to drag them across the carpet and the tile in the, in the kitchen, and I'm going to try to catch a fish. You'd probably walk off and go, I knew something was wrong with that boy. He's lost his mind. Why would you make fun of me? Because you know the fish are not in my living room or my kitchen. The fish are in the water, whether it's a pond or a river or a lake, and you don't even think twice about going to the water to catch the fish. But then sometimes in churches, we got it mixed up. We don't realize <clears throat> in order to catch a fish, you've got to go where the fish are. The fish aren't going to flop up on the bank, get on their tail, and wiggle to your house. And jump in your skillet and say, fry me. It's, we're not, you're laughing because it's not rocket science. and it, it, It's plum comical. But in, if you're going to catch a fish, you've got to put some bait out there. And it ain't like we're begging people to be a part of something. Oh, you know, our Lord, he's okay. He is the creator of the universe. He can meet your needs. He, he can snap his finger and change everything that we've been working on for years. He is faithful, amen? <clears throat> but we must do our part. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 through verse 16. First Kings, I'm sorry. And the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to what? The man of God said, he, God told him, I've instructed a rich lady. No, a widow. So he went there, and as he arrived at the gate to the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a, a little water in a cup? And as she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread, too. Sound like a preacher, don't it? But she said, I swear by the Lord your God, I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. For I have only a, what? Handful of flour left in a jar. Everybody say handful. Little is much with God. Most of the time we talk ourselves out of miracles and God's blessings saying, well, we can't do that because I don't know how to do this. God already knew that. He'll take up your slack. I only got a handful of flour left in the jar and a little, everybody say little, a little bit of cooking oil in the bottom of a jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, don't, don't be afraid. Let's say it together. Don't be afraid. Man, fear is the tool of Satan in our lives. How many have ever been around? Now, I, I, I work, and thank God for the church. Now, I don't work as hard as I used to, but almost every day I'm around a horse in some form or fashion. And when a horse gets scared, they will hurt you and hurt you quick. People are the same way. You let fear get in the room of people, and man, we lose our mind for a minute, don't we? When we get scared. And so fear is a tactic that Satan uses to distract us. I think everybody would agree with that. But Elijah told her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. And use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your what? <coughs> Containers. Until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. Can I get a good amen? What's he telling this lady? God is going to provide. But did he tell her, go in there and lay down in your sealy posturepedic and don't do nothing? No, he said, use what you have. Go make a cake. Use what you have and more will come looking for you. All right, verse 15. So she did, as Elijah said. Everybody say, she did. 
That's two words, and they're kind of quick. Everybody say she did together on the count of three. One, two, three, she did. Man, it didn't take us no time to say that, did it? But you know, it wasn't so easy for her to do that. Think about her life. I'm going to die. I got a little bit of flour, a little bit of oil. I'm going to make one cake, and we're done. We're in a drought. But that ain't how it ended. Elijah said, do not be afraid. Went on and gave her instructions. And, and here we go. Elijah said, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do what you've said. Make a little bread first. But use what's left for the meal. And there'll always be flour in your bin. There'll always be oil. So she did as Elijah said. It's easy for us if we got plenty of stuff to say, ah, she, she obeyed. But it's, it's hard to obey when you don't have much sometimes. Anybody ever been there? But she did what Elijah said. One time I was in Bible school and I was, I was pretty broke. Had a tuition coming up. It was a challenge. And I've told you this story, but there was this guy that was in my class. There was 2,200 students in there. I've never seen 2,200 people in one place in my life. I'm from Beulah, Texas. And to top it off, they told me I had to wear a tie. Almost, almost choked myself with that tie the first time I put it on. Finally, I tried it at home, and I told my brother, I said, Look, before I leave for Oklahoma, dude, you've got to tie this tie. And do not. <laughs> show me this, just suck it up on me. And so we went through it three or four times. And uh, so I was able to put those two or three ties on and go to school. They, they wanted me to wear a tie. It was out of my comfort zone, but I did submit to authority. Can I get a good amen? And <laughs> was glad to do it. Just didn't know much about it. But I was poor in Bible school. And God put it on my heart one day. There was a guy. I knew he was struggling. Gosh, you ever had the Lord start dealing with you? And you're like, Lord, you got the wrong address. <laughs> There's somebody else. And he put it on my heart to give that dude $100, and that was a lot of money. I got $7 to, to, to pull shoes and finish horses, and we can only do four to five horses every day because I went to school to lunch. So I made $28 a day to $35. Put on my heart to give him hundred dollars, and it was tough, boy. How many of you ever pitched on one of them Ben Franklins before? You don't want to let it go, man. I was struggling with it, and finally, after school, I went and found him. I said, or during class, said, "Holler at me after school," and I'm like, "Lord, let him go on out of here and get out of here pretty quick." <laughs> I, I really did want to obey him, but I'm telling you, I was struggling with it because I couldn't afford it. Really, I give that dude that money that day. And he broke down and cried. He said, man, how would you know this? Who talked to you? I said, oh, nobody. He said, I was $100 short on my tuition. Thought I was going to drop out of school. <laughs> man, I went away that day and it just humbled me. What if I hadn't obeyed? I mean, God could use anybody. But I'm glad that I did my best to obey him that day. But it's easy when it says she did, as Elijah said, but it's not as easy when you're going through a struggle. And she did what the, the man of God said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat, verse 15, for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil. Let's say that together. There was always enough flour and olive oil. Where at? Left in the what? Container. Just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Isn't that cool? And there's another story that we'll run over uh, next week. I'm gonna, I, I mentioned it earlier. <coughs> but Peter, y'all remember Peter was a professional fisherman. And Jesus, Peter and his guys had fished all night. They were commercial fishermen. They fished all night and caught what? Nothing. So, I mean, you're a professional fisherman, you, you catch nothing. Jesus is getting ready to speak to a huge crowd, and he asked Peter, he said, can I borrow your boat? And he let out off of the, the shore and used the boat as a pulpit, and with the wind blowing the right way, water will carry sound. They didn't have sound systems in that day. So he uses Peter's boat. Jesus 
ministers to the people, comes back to the shore and told Peter, go ahead, because they had done clean their nets, a lot of work. If you look at a professional fisherman cleaning their nets, they, he did all this and put it up, had it folded up, and Jesus said, don't you love it when Jesus challenges you? Ask you to do something you didn't want to do or you don't think will work. Better pay attention. Let's say it together. Better pay attention. My old pastor that led me to Christ, he used to say this all the time. Pay attention, boy. He's going to be with the Lord now. But when he asks you to do something, so he tells Peter, go back out and let your nets down not see what you do. He said, let your nets down, three words, for a catch. Say it with me, for a catch. Let your net down for a catch. We know the story. He, Peter had to battle his mind. Can you imagine? Ugh, I know what I'm doing. He goes, lets those nets down. <laughs> and the, the net, they were so full, they started breaking, and he had to call for help. But it took Peter's obedience to not depend on Proverbs 3, his own what? Understanding. We're trying to figure everything out. If we could have done that, we'd already done it. Peter caught multiple fish, had to call help in, and God blessed him for his obedience. Amen? Can I tell you another way God blessed me one time? Because, see, y'all don't see me driving hoopties no more and eating beans and rice on Monday, rice and beans on Tuesday, beans and rice with cornbread on Wednesday, rice and beans on Thursday. I've done it all. <laughs> I've been out helping people in Oklahoma on a ranch one time, and they was castrating calves, and they was going to throw away the calf fries. I was like, nah, it's a negative on that. I'll take them. Went home and cook them up. Allison, you ready for some calf fries? She, she said, I like them. <laughs> How many of you, your parents remember, you know, people nowadays, we just throw an old buffalo or a gar away. Some of them old people, they, they, they had gar balls. Made them up and they, they, they ate them. Not because it was a delicacy, because they was hungry. And they didn't, couldn't go down to Brookshire Brothers. <laughs> And they had to do what they had to do. <laughs> but I've always, even when I had nothing, obviously <laughs> I'm not rich, but God blessed me with a job and a, a great church. And I worked two or three jobs. I'm not lazy. And the way I was raised up, my dad bought, he gave me a birthday present when I turned 15. It's a full-time job at Western Auto in Diabol, Texas. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And he would take me to work and pick me up in the evenings. He was retired. God, man, I'm so thankful that he gave me some work ethic. Bless God, I still got it. I may be a little bit older and I get up a little slower, but Clayton, when I come out from under a horse, I have a little gait to me. And once I get it straightened up, I'm all right. <laughs> but God's been good to me in the little things. Man, I put a two dollars in an offering as an offering and that was big and then i've done other things you know we just got to be faithful where we're at if you'll take care of what you got i decided i was gonna get me some bucking bulls one time i drove to shoot name of that little town anyway porter boys tommy and uh, sean porters had some bucking bulls they owned a bull named raspberry wine and they said, oh, we think about selling on raspberry wine. I said, I, I want it. Said, How much does he cost? And they told me it was a lot of money. But I, I done it. Called my old trusty banker. Don't you know he was wishing I wasn't around. I'm trying to buy a 12-year-old bull. And he said, what does he want for me? He said, he wants 4500 I said, I'm going to go get him. So I went up there and got him. And the whole way home, I was like, you idiot. You idiot, you've lost your mind. But I really felt like, man, you idiot. I get $4,500 for him back a long time ago. Kept him three months, and they had raised a calf out of raspberry wine. 
They sold him on the internet on an online auction. This guy pitched. He bucked. So they put him out on this auction, and people's just bidding. Boom, boom, boom. He brings $52,250. Now, he wasn't my calf. I know that's what y'all thought. He wasn't mine, but I owned his daddy. Everybody say amen. <laughs> but it was a blessing because the semen was $200 a straw, and it went to 1000 that night. <clears throat> and I sold some semen. It helped me. Raised my kids. I bought a bat wing uh, mower, 15 foot. <laughs> Did some things that I needed, and it, you know, was good to my family and my kiddos. And, you know, I think about old Raspberry. There's a picture of him when you leave church. When you go out the door on the right. Wow, makes me want to cry. God bless me with that old bull. <laughs> and for a season, you know, I was able, didn't sell a ton of it, but I, you know, it helped us, helped us get a few things that I needed at the time. And, uh, and I think about that, and I think about how God is. How many of you can say God's been good to you? And you may not have a bull you bought or nothing, you know, but there's things that only God can get credit for. Amen? So when you see old raspberry out there, it, it's special. When I look at that anvil, it means a lot to me. And I think about Miss Allison. Man, I went through some hard times in life, but look what he blessed me with. What if I'd have gave up? Look what he blessed me with. I'm kind of thankful for this old man, but we're going to close out. Me and Miss Allen's going home. <laughs> Do what? She said, now I'm getting romantic. <laughs> but anyway, God's good. Amen. Trust him. If he puts something on your heart, do it. I'm not talking about giving somebody $2 or $200. i am talking about the, anything. You may be walking out of Walmart and the Lord put on your heart, go back and be kind to that person you just seen or met or wherever. Obey him. It ain't the fact that God could use anybody to do it, but when you do it, you put yourself in a position for God to use you. That's right. To whom much is given... Much is required. So God wants us to be faithful. When he speaks to us, let's be quick to go. Amen. Lord, thank you for tonight. We love you. You've been good to us. Thank you for all of our stories, all of our trials, temptations, challenges that we've all been through. We're still here and we're still making it. And we love you and you took us through everything we've ever faced. Thank you, God, for being good to us. In Jesus' name. Everybody see it? Y'all have a blessed night. Looking forward to Sunday. Man, it's a good day.